Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast and welcome to the Tactical Debrief where we take a deeper look at Sheffield United nil, Aston Villa 5, which is absolutely amazing. So share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Make sure you smash a like on this episode. Let's go big on likes. Let's have a thousand likes and subscribe to this channel if you are new. So on the debrief, we have a look at more in-depth at what we saw against Sheffield United. So uh, passing networks, average positions. We take a deeper look at some of the goals from still images from the game. We just have a look, little look at some of the stats from that game as well. Um, but yeah, still absolutely buzzing. I think I've watched the goals so many times and you just see different little bits from the goals, don't you? Like different little intricate parts where you're like, wow, that was really good. And um, yeah, I think... You know, I, I picked Watkins as man of the match, but I'm looking at Tinnemans and I'm thinking, what a player. What a player when it, when he when he's full, fully ticking. And I think, you know, we've yet to see the best out of Tinnemans, but we've seen real good little parts from him and he's had injuries and he's had to come back and he's now sort of getting back to that level that he was sort of at the Man City game. So I thought Tinnemans was brilliant in that sort of, Second striker pressing from the front, dropping into a box midfield, which allows Bailey to press as well. Their combination was absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I'll go back and I stick by what I was after from that performance. You know, I wanted control. You know, I always mention it whenever I do a debrief or whenever I analyse Aston Villa. The first question I ask is, did we control the game? Because we know that Unai is all about control. He wants to control every minute from the first minute to the last minute. Um, and if we have control and we've got a better platform to grow into the game, to control the game, to dictate the tempo at our terms, and we're just a far greater side. And I think when Cons is at right back, when Carlos is in there, it allows us to do that. And I've got everything that I needed from that performance. I've got the reaction. And I think the reaction is probably the best part about it. You know, take away the goals the reaction and how we played to, to bring that level again, to find it, to, you know, and to find it probably was a bit of soul searching this week at Bodymore. It was a little bit of having a look in the mirror, everybody's mentality being right, everybody looking at what they should be doing and having that inner drive and that inner belief to sort of perform and, and make sure we did perform. It's one thing, you know, Unai probably showing them what they need to be doing and the players going, yeah, yeah, and stepping out on that pitch. But the big part is actually going out and delivering that plan. And, and to put that performance of five goals was was absolutely brilliant. So I think it's sort of put us back in a really good place. It allows us now to have more confidence, especially in the Premier League, um, and to just keep going. You know, we've, we've seen... Newcastle drop points, we've seen Spurs drop points, and it's important for Villa to capitalise. It's the first time that we've really capitalised when some of those teams have dropped points, so that was another pleasing aspect of it um, for us to find those levels, really. So let's have a little look at the tail of the game, then we'll have a look at some of the stats from the game. So Aston Villa's XG was 2.27, we outperformed that by three goals. We've got a possession of 65%, Sheffield United out of 35, 14 shots to Villa, 10 on target for Aston Villa. And this is the big one as well, and it's all about control. Aston Villa, 628 passes, 89% passing accuracy out of 628 passes, which is remarkable. You can see that they've got 78% passing accuracy off 328. So our press was brilliant. You could see that all game where even in that second half where they just couldn't get a grip on the game. They couldn't get a foothold. And that was all down to Aston Villa swamping Sheffield United. Dribble success from Villa is 65%. We've got the momentum bar of this game as well. You can see Aston Villa in the blue. So very, very dominant in that first half. Second half, dominant as well. And then they grew into it and had the little spell around 75, 70, 80 minute mark. Uh, you've got the match dominance based on expected threat. So our expected threat was 5.18. Theirs was 1.98. And again, you can see those real big spikes, especially in that first half. Shots by XG by the minute. Aston Villa, again, first half, 
absolutely peppering it. Um, and we spoke about that in the match preview, that let's not try and score the perfect goal. We saw Dougie early on in the game shooting from distance and we were just more, not even clinical, but more um, direct but assertive with our play. Every ball had a purpose. And I think that was, you know, something that we've lacked in the last couple of games. Aston Villa shot map, uh, three XG on the shot map. So again, you can see four shots from outside the box, quite a few from inside it. Um, and then you've got Sheffield United's average position. So you can see on their left-hand side, they were really penned in with number five, 33 and 35. Um, they look like they've kind of got a bit of a Christmas tree formation going on. And here you can see their passing network. So, you know, their big network is trustee to centre-back. Again, I'm not going to butcher that name. Uh, you've got Souza, and then you've got no network between Brooks, uh, Davis and Bereton Diaz. Now, we spoke about keeping Bereton Diaz quiet, albeit he shot in the first half. Apart from that, there's no network to Diaz. So, Aston Villa really cut out that line to Bereton Diaz, who's their biggest threat. There's no focal point to the team. It's very deep um, and there's just a lack of depth, especially in that midfield area. And that's a testament to Aston Villa pressing Sheffield United. Compare that to Aston Villa's network and average positions something different for Moonai. We know the left-hand side is a channel that we always attack with, but if you look at the average positions from this game, you can see that Moreno is a little bit deeper and uh, Consa is the furthest forward of the fullbacks. That right-hand side for Aston Villa was absolutely electric. You've got Tielemans, Diar, um, Bailey making up that partnership with Konza, and it was such a threat, especially on that right-hand side. You can even see 44 Kamara screen in the back three, but you can also see John McGinn, number seven, a little bit more narrow. So you've got more of a progressive performance from Louise. McGinn, a little bit more central helping out that midfield as well. And then you've got that two focal point of Tielemans and Watkins. Dynamite, absolutely dynamite. A real good pressing performance from Aston Villa. And then here you have our network. So you've got that real big network between Carlos and Longley. You've got Whit from Consa and Moreno. Right-hand side, Tielemans. Look at the little triangles. Triangles everywhere. The sign of a good network are triangles because it shows that there's a pattern and a network between the three players that are in that little triangle so you've got you know a triangle with long leg carlos kamara a triangle with carlos kamara konza a triangle with kamara konza tielemans tielemans konza bailey and then you've got little triangles of mcginn watkins long lay uh, and vice versa on that left hand side so a real good network from aston villa um, and it's pleasing to see that we'd switched it up a little bit with going more attacking on that right-hand side with Conta being a little bit more higher up than Moreno. So we really tweaked our system for that as well. So next part of the episode, I really want to highlight the goals, uh, go big on the goals on this episode. And just, they were that good. We've got to, we've got to take a deeper look at the goals. It's all about Louise to start with. You know, we, we can see that Watkins had a, perfect performance you know on that shoulder if you do this against ollie watkins you're one v one with space and you're not touch tight and that ball goes through there you're going to have a massive massive problem and this center back here is stuck in no man's land he's got absolutely no chance um so the center back from sheffield united has stepped out this one stuck with Watkins. Watkins is through. Let's just take a look at McGinn's position here. McGinn is the goal scorer in this move. And what I spoke about on the match reaction yesterday is when this ball hits this post, look at the desire of McGinn to get in there. Hungry, fire in the belly. Absolutely loved it. Uh, and shout out to Luis for the ball. Watkins and McGinn for this goal as well. Again, this is a this is a Jude Bellingham goal. This is we saw this for was it England that we saw this that he scored a goal in. So this Sheffield United player has just played a cross, and Douglas Luiz took up position about there. So he took up a position for the cutback. He's retrieved the ball and he's laid it off to Kamara. Kamara has played a beautiful ball in there. Luiz is on his bike. He wants to get into this area. He can see green grass. So he thought, right, give and go, get into this area. 
And then the next part is just exquisite, you know, outside of the foot. And it's not gone through this gap here. It's not gone to Watkins there. This pass hasn't gone there. This pass has gone outside of the foot, outside of this player, into Watkins there. What? What a pass that is. He's curled it around the player perfectly for Ollie Watkins to run onto. Touch. This is exquisite. Absolutely world class. Don't forget, his starting position was the edge of the box. He's cut out the cross. He's played this world class ball. And it's, it's a great finish because this defender, you know, he's made up ground. He's putting him under pressure and he's found that bottom corner. Absolutely remarkable finish. Um, absolutely brilliant. Again, another one, Watkins, real good hold-up play, has laid the ball to Leon Bailey, and then look at the space. He's got space to go down there. He's got space to drive in there if he needs to, but it's, oh, it's class. It's absolutely class. And then here, you know, when he cuts inside on that left foot, and there's that, that amount of space here to get through, and that little gap there in that goal, you know, this is Bailey territory, and what a finish, and he's Bailey's class. I, I can't talk to you, you know, enough about how good Leon Bailey is at the minute because he's absolutely remarkable. He, he, he's, he's first class. He'd had a Soiter, and then his next one, Tielemans, banger, crossbar, down, boast, bounced in. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Creative set pieces again. And then this next one, you know, Leon Bailey to keep this ball in play, you know, when it when it's being jockeyed out by the defender and then to knock it back to Ollie Watkins, who then finds Moreno and Moreno volleys it in. First class goals, absolutely fantastic. You know, the goals were brilliant. The play was brilliant. The pressing was brilliant. The positions were brilliant. The players' performances were brilliant. Tactics for Moon and I were class. And I'm just you know, over the moon going into the next couple of games now. So a little bit of a short, sharp, sweet debrief. Um, utter domination from Aston Villa. Really happy um, and can't wait for the FA Cup game now. So, yeah, absolutely buzzing. Hopefully you've all enjoyed this episode. Cheers for your support. Up the Villa. <laughs>